Greetings! My name is Joe Bob, and my. Uh, sorry. And I'm very peeved. I must say it might. I don't know what I was. I just really flubbed that intro. Anyways, welcome back to Pathologic. I. Well, despite that little flubbing of the intro, I'm feeling pretty good today. I just recently got the last truly difficult achievement in 20 minutes till dawn all, all that's left is the victory lap and we're going to finally be able to get to the abattoir well in a few hours we're gonna be we're gonna be doing that let's see I still don't know what the fuck this letter is about it's nonsense anyways have I done everything? Yep. I'll just swing over here to do some looting, I guess. Maybe over here, actually. Oh, whatever. I'll do some... I'm gonna go do some things, and then do some other things. I gotta get it. I will hit the thing with the other thing, till I make a different thing! Yeah, I should also do a bit of stealing. Move! Gotta be fucking kidding me! Am I actually just completely trapped? Finally, Jesus Christ. Do you have any nuts? Why are you looking for nuts? First of all, you can play with them, and now you can eat them too. Didn't you eat nuts before? Well, would we eat you? Of course we would. And you're obviously nuts too. Eating nuts. It's like eating your kitten or your stamp collection. Every nut is a story, a chronicle of adventures. They even have names. But recently we've begun to eat them. We have to choose each time which of them goes. <laughs> it does indeed sound very sad. Honestly, I think I might, may have gone a bit far when it comes to the whole saving up for schmouter stuff. They've always got like so much, so many re resources to trade with those bozos. And also, got all, uh, and what do I have to show for it? Well, I've got loads of schmouter, but I've not had to actually use any of it so far, so. Yeah. I might have gone a bit too far in a few places. I think big, big enough stuff I have a ridiculous amount of. Meridor. Been stockpiling it for fucking ages. I've got a million of it. What, how much do I have? 37. And that's with me using a couple of bottles every single time I sleep. Which, now that I say it out loud, doesn't really sound very healthy. But, yeah. Ha! I've gotten better at slipping past these guys. Okay. Still got two more hours. Let's go do some looting. Oh. Wait, who the fuck are you? Hi. This person is sick. No, don't blame yourself. That's not your fault. One of your rival counterparts must have overlooked them, or left them on purpose. Nevertheless, no entry. It's under quarantine. I keep a sorrowful watch. Can't they be helped? Even being one of the bound, they're just an ordinary person. They can be cured. Just like any other. You're the healer here, it's your area of expertise. Huh. I've got a, a victim of your carelessness behind this door. A victim of your negligence of a doctor's duty. But you just said that it wasn't my fault. Whatever. I have a box with the children's smouter. It could help. This? This will cripple them for the rest of their life. It will burn all their insides along with the plague. Are you sure you want to save them from the disease of its cost? Uh. Hmm. Yeah, sure. What? Uh, let's see. Uh, 
I mean, clearly it's not that bad. I mean, it only re it, some bed rest with some meridorm should defeat him through. Well knows the kitten who's. Oh. Okay then. Guess he doesn't care <laughs> that I just saved him. Well, he seems of good health. I'm very fine. Hmm. That's concerning, though, that the people can, that important characters can just randomly get sick and I'll, and I never even knew about it. Well, I might never even find out unless I swing by them. Maybe I should do the rounds more often than, like, every day, go around and visit every notable character. I'm sure I... I Judging by the last couple of days, I I don't doubt that I'd have the time to do that. It'll cut into my time spent, you know, uh... Well, no, it won't cut into my time spent doing anything, because I can just do the rounds, and then... and then load a save, and then go specifically to anyone who's infected or something. Hmm. It'll be, it'll certainly be time consuming in, like, in real life, but, yeah, well. It's worth it to keep everyone alive. Well, everyone important alive. I still don't know what the purpose of these crowbars is. I don't think, I'm fairly certain I wasn't able to, I guess I can't even sell them. Or if I can, it's for very little. They don't seem to be involved in any quest. Maybe they're just, I don't know, flavor item. I can't even, I can't even trade them to the patrolman, I don't think. Well, I'll check. I've got plenty of space. Oh, yes, okay. You oh, wow, they're actually really valuable, wow. Yeah, I regret not stocking up on them now. Uh. I can tr uh, I can trade one for an entire fucking what a uh, rifle bullet. Very nice. That's uh, that actually makes going into those places almost entirely self-sustaining. Actually, since I only need one rifle bullet to take out a looter, uh, those ninjas, you know. All right. Killing is my business, and business is good. Oh dear, running out of- Ooh, wow, a scalpel! Nice! That's... I was expecting to see that. Just, just randomly had a scalpel, I guess. Nice! Uh, 2300. What did I just get? Now towards entrance is open. I must hurry. Wait. I thought it was 20... I thought it was... Huh? I thought it was gonna open in half an hour. What? Oh shit. Damn it. Not a good time. Oh wow. Oh, that's neat! The noise of the rifle actually scared off the rats. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, wasn't, I wasn't expecting that, though. Alright, kudos to whoever designed that. Good idea. Ooh, wow! Fresh meat, nice. Well, I sure hope I'm going the right way. I think this is the Abbotport entrance, but I don't have any actual evidence of that. <laughs> Aha! Yes! Loading! At last! What the heck? Is this a cave? Uh... What the fuck was that? Just fucking zoomed. Hi! Evening, gents. <laughs> the 
just fucking stood there and took the punch. What the heck, Denkovsky? You have a rifle. <laughs> I ta I've taught you better than this, Denkovsky. Damn it. Whoa. Fucking YMCA marksman squad. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. That's a thing that just happened. Wait, were the... Mark says probably coming to save me, or was I being shot by a firing line or something? Ah, this is this must be the army then. I uh, sure hope oh, the deck coffee didn't get shot by a firing a firing squad. Ah, soldiers of the YMCA. I thought we were getting the army, not the navy. Sure, he's not compensating for anything at all. Oh, hail Hitler, apparently. <laughs> well, that, that is a really unnatural position for your, for your hands. The day is over. Your timely efforts allowed your supporters to remain unharmed. Ooh, rifles. I don't mind if I grab a couple of these. At the theater. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Well then, you must be... Yeah, okay. Picture yesterday, 362. Died yesterday, 410. Dawn missing, 36. Total death toll, 3690. Currently infected, 519. The town is dying. It all ends in less than four days. I'm dying, yeah. Probably. In which the town is occupied and the worried children ask for the bachelor's help for the you first time ever. Oh, what, what time is it? Hang on. Fourteen. Oh shit! I have uh, I was conked out for like fourteen hours. Bloody hell! That's like that's most of the day gone. I said again in any exhaustion. Huh. Well, that's the problem. Yo. Where are the orderlies? Those lazy bastards. I'm glad you've. I'm glad you've made it, De Bachelor Denkowski. What were you doing in the abattoir? I was looking for you. Uh, is that so? Ex-Governor Savarov told me where to look for you this night. Funny. I don't remember telling him about that. Uh, where are we going? I seek your advice. What have you discovered about the epidemic? Can it be stopped, and what can the army do to that end? I never expected you to be so straightforward. I... Uh, why? He's a military man. Straightforward is what they do. The Inquisitor... The Inquisitor is my enemy. Evidence mounts by the hour. I have no further desire to listen to my enemies. A dog should never trust a cat. Fire should never trust water. And I, a battlefield general, will not trust Inquisitors. Well, dogs and cats get along fine so long as they're, they get, they can get used to each other. Especially, uh, the problem is that they, that the uh, the stuff, the habits they build up like when they, the uh, behavior stuff, the the way they play around is, you now whatever. <laughs> Je General, Ag Aglaya Lilich is my ally. She has aided me no less than you have. I have no desire to be part of your conflict. Do you have any idea how many traps Inquisitors spin into their webs? The truth will be beyond your wildest expectations. Well, I am not a puppet. I suspect, however, that I have already been made into one. I suspect that even the words I'm uttering now are merely part of our calculations. I suspect you're exaggerating. I feel a fighting man in you. Someone who thinks before he strikes. Someone who takes responsibility for his blows. Who chose a worthy, op who chose a worthy opponent and is capable of vanquishing it? We are two warriors, and it is our task to deal with the evil threatening to spread across the whole country from here. Consider me to be your friend. Right? We fought a just, defensive war, and now they want to turn us into a punitive expedition. Into Corsman. Tell me, Alexander, what, were, what are your intentions for concerning the Polyhedron? That terrible structure on the other side of the river? Yeah. How does it even stand upright? 
Made possible by an ingenious architectural solution, I suppose. I'm not yet sure. And what's inside? Uh, an independent state, and an extremely aggressive one at that. All its citizens are children. And who is looking after these children? That's the point. No one is. They might try all sorts of tricks. If they try anything massive and disruptive to the public order, we'll have to subdue them by force. Don't worry. No one is going to shoot them. But you'll have to agree that the rascals deserve something more persuasive than a simple spanking. I'll try to keep them from doing anything rash. Why did you bring the subject up? I wanted to ask two things of you. First, do not disturb them with your attention. Leave that to me. And second, should they try anything stupid, such as... I don't know. If you hear strange sounds from that direction or if they send messengers, anything. Just consult me first. I'm staying here until the end. Very well. You have my word. Thank you. We fought it just. What the heck is that sound? Alrighty then. Okay. The military is here, and we lost 14 hours of our lives because we got, because we were apparently incapable of actually defending ourselves or even moving out of the way of this guy's fist. Oh, hey, I mean, you didn't really do much. I heard you fire, but I didn't actually. You didn't seem to take any damage, actually. I think you just heard a bad shot. Yo. No? Nothing? Ah, These guys are much less fun than the patrolmen. Um... Oh! Well, a bunch of letters while I was gone- oh, while I was asleep. Inquisitor, a, a glare of invitation. Because of what happened yesterday, I can't help but feel worried about you. Please don't rush headlong into your independent investigation. Keep in mind that an ar the army is a force to be reckoned with, and any mistake we make will may well be our last. What we need to do is wait and co to collate our observations. I will be waiting for you at the cathedral. Victor. I wish I could start this letter on a happier note, the Bachelor, but I am utterly crestfallen. There is hardly there is hardly a more harrowing discovery than to look back on the life you have lived and to see how little you have managed to do. I am almost out of time, and the only thing I want is to pass whatever it was that gave meaning to my existence on to somebody else. Unsurprisingly, I see no better -er man to confide in than yourself. Please come to see me when you can. P.S. I hope that the tower will open before you. It is very important. Alright. Laura, please do come to the please do come to the shelter. I know how preoccupied you are, how exhausted, but the matter is of great importance. I hope this will be the last thing I ask of you. Anna. Bachelor, I sincerely urge you to uh, see me at the Willows as soon as you can. We have serious business that needs taking care of. Pay no heed to those slandering me. Everything is different now. The fact of the matter is, we have an opportunity to save the life of one of your closest associates. A-A-A. <laughs> see, it's Anna Angel. That means her middle name is A as well, I guess. Unless it's A-A for Anna, that would be so. Julia. Allow me to invite you to the travel, Bachelor. For your own benefit, of course, since the matter I'd like to discuss has a bearing on yesterday's happenings. Make haste, Bachelor. Time is of the essence. Three more parties are playing this particular game, and we may easily find ourselves outpaced. We are each other. Bloody hell! I've only got, got ten hours left in the day, and there's a million different people demanding my attention. And I've decided like, to all, you know, doing the rounds all around the place. Make sure nobody dies of the plague. Ah! Well. Well, okay, these. These three are the closest. Let's go to them. Then you. Then you. Then you. And then swing by over to this guy to get a new map. Then to Victor. He goes to the Victor, go the spoils. Oh, and obviously, Aglaia. Although she's not marked on the map, unlike the rest. Okay. Let's go. What 
the fuck is that? Looks like a fucking fucking uh, laser blaster from some kind of retro futurism. Must be a flamethrower of some kind. Well, not and uh, well, that is the uh, the wimpy sort that you see in video games, anyways. Not the proper military flamethrower that like properly throws flame. <laughs> Clothes are worn into holes. Please, don't be surprised with my strange request. I need a pistol, and it must come with bullets, or whatever it is that they shoot. Yeah. Oh my. Yes, it's bullets. Now I slightly regret selling mine. I've asked everybody, even the changeling. You know that tiny pistol she carries around? It looks very handy. It's just what I need. Oh, you're not talking about a revolver, you're talking about that holdout pistol thingamajig. Yeah, I wouldn't have that, one of those anyways. But she wouldn't give it to me. She said she has plans for me, that she requires my life. So your life is what you're going to risk, isn't it? Oh, not like you're my husband or older brother, are you now? If you won't bring it to me, I'll just ask the Harrisbex. He's less squeamish. And I can give you a, r a very rare and valuable thing in exchange. A thing from yesterday, remember? Oh, panacea. Must be what she's referring to. Alright, fine, I'll get you a pistol. As long as you're not gonna use it to fucking- What? Shoot yourself or something. I see no problem. In fact, it's probably prudent to carry around some- uh, some holdout weaponry, considering the nutty world we find ourselves in. Mm. All right, the Yulia that. Are you ever actually gonna fire? Yes. And then, years. Hmm, I don't see many patrolmen anymore, that's concerning. Got some stuff to bar- I got some stuff to bar with them. Maybe they've been reassigned to the scoured areas. It makes sense to keep the- to use the soldiers for the- Really dangerous areas. So I question their I, I still question their bare arms, you know? As the mind endeavors to reach one goal, the heart insensibly drags us towards another. So ni so nice of you to drop by. What did your visit to the military reveal? Did you get to meet Alexander the Great? Was he a man of astute mind, vigorous imagination, and refined sense of humor? Please be as sincere as possible. The subject is of significant interest to me. Why? My field of enquiry is ever the same. I am testing a theory which concerns what I refer to as the tripwires of fate. You know I am a bit of a fatalist, don't you? Yes, to your detriment. Anyway... In order to further test my hypothesis, I will require your assistance with one of my enterprises. Apart from its sheer scientific value, this whole business will rid Lara Revel of whatever is troubling her. Moreover, with a little bit of luck, an innocent life will be saved. <sighs> oh really? Wait till you hear this one. Lara Revel conspires to assassinate the commander. She is so naive, our Lara, barely able to keep her operation a secret. Half the town is aware that she seeks to purchase a firearm. No one would sell her what, of course. Assassinate the commander. Now that would be... That would be impressive, considering. And why has she chosen such a target? 
ludicrous, is it not? The man was wounded four times at the Karstov Fords, which did nothing to impede him. He emerged a victor. No, victor is a different person. That's one of the canes. Regardless of the grenade fragment which sat bone deep in his flesh. And there she is, expecting a uh, hero to be killed uh, as such, to be killed by a pellet, which would hardly suffice to put a dent in his uniform. Well, anyone can be put down if you sh if you aim r b right between their eyes. <laughs> also, that's not what I meant. What's her problem with the commander? Perhaps she believes that he represents a kind of universal evil, an ultimate annihilator who has arrived with the only purpose of reducing the town to rubble. If only he was killed, Lara thinks, it would provide us with a much needed delay. After all, the medicine was already researched, she thinks. Was it though? I don't know. Just wait till you've heard it all. The commander was informed by some unknown benefactor that there will be an attempt on him soon. Along with everything else, the note contained a request. If the assassin proves to be a woman, she must not be killed. The weapon of the assassin, the note said, will be a harmless toy, and whoever wields it will not deserve anything more than a short ter term imprisonment. And how do you know about the anonymous, anonymous letter, or are you its author? Why would you insinuate such a thing? I had absolutely nothing to do with the letter. It was someone else, someone very involved with this whole affair. Just like the rest of the parties, this person acts in good faith and conscience. Including the informer, I doubt you can convince me of that, it is well known that Block is as chivalrous as they come. If a hapless assassin is guaranteed safety, the unknown correspondent has promised to let the commander know the name of the culprit and therefore spare him the tiresome necessity to seize every single person to appear within firing range. I don't th think you would be too disappointed to learn that the letter was written by none other than Anna. <laughs> that dirty creature. Wow, rude. I mean, she's just doing fairly doing what she can to fucking save the life of one lady, and you're calling her a dirty creature. <laughs> uh, don't be too harsh on her. She's a thespian, a child, eager to entertain her whims. The assassination will be an utter fiasco. The military will be forewarned, and the gun that Lara has obtained will not fire. They will treat Lara as they treat women they believe to be hysterical or deranged. They are going to lock her up. But what does Anna have to gain from this? What is her deal? No, Yulia, you're not being entirely honest. Ask her, if you don't believe me. Anna's eccentricity is borderline hysterical. She is scared, perhaps, and eager to get on the good side of whoever she believes to be holding the most authority. Very well, but what does this have to do with testing your fatalistic theories? The commander wants to know who the woman is. Just tell him the assassin is me. Tell him that whoever else comes to shoot him with a weapon that does not fire is merely a mad woman, keen to sacrifice herself for me. The reason I have plotted an asinine scheme like this is that I need to be placed under house arrest as soon as possible. I'd rather not tell you why I need that. Under house arrest? And what if they shoot you? The man who won the Battle of the Fords is going to shoot me? Yeah. Don't be ridiculous. I have nothing at all to fear from him. Oh, actually, no. Not him. More likely, his men. Because you are a fatalist and not afraid of death, right? Don't lie to me, Yulia. This is dangerous. This is the best option, still. I know Lara too well. No one will be able to stop her. She will find a gun sooner or later. On the other hand, your cooperation may net you Anna's panacea in addition to my own, since Anna was the third person offered a vial. Hmm. You know, it still doesn't seem like the brightest of ideas. There's no neat reason to worry. This whole affair will hurt no one. Yeah, I've heard that a million times before. Quite the opposite, in fact. Everyone will benefit from it. Heard that a, a billion times. Everyone, including yourself. I don't really need this vial of panacea, you see. I may be very easily persuaded to hand it over. I think I'll talk about that, Anna. Seems like you're playing a device. What? Whatever. Very well. You should it's me. I don't know about. I, I don't know. I still don't know if this is a good idea, but three bottles of panacea uh, is certainly not something I'm going to pass up. 
It is clear that Yulia wants to shield Lara, even though she tries her best to make it look as though she expects to benefit from it. Is she really inclined to play this kind of game with fate? Her strategy is simple. She will let the commander know that the mysterious Avenger is none other than her. She expects to suffer the consequence. It's... Alright. I guess it's too much to expect sensible, sane decisions from anyone in this town. I might as well play along with their delusions in order to get resources. That's mostly that's most of what I've been doing so far. Ooh, army boots. Oh my goodness. 57,000. I mean, I can afford it, but goddamn. Protect the feet and lower legs from both infection and wounds. Clean stab wounds. Make it safer to walk over burning coals and sharp objects such as nails. Am I going to be doing a lot of that? Walking over burning coals and such? Ah, prices have risen. Yeah, well. Just sell off some of this stuff. Yeah. All right, let's test it then, shall we? With this, it's this. Okay. Um, that's yeah, just over the first bend. What? And then with this, it's whoa! That is a sizable jump. My goodness. Yeah, I. That's probably worth it. And I'll bet it. La uh, and judging from the other stuff I've had, I. I imagine the more expensive stuff is also more durable to balance out the increased cost of repairing them. Yeah. Alright. Nice stealing from you. Hmm. This means that I only need... What, uh... I should only need, like, one other decent upgrade to... Nope! Are you serious? I should only, I should just need one more piece of gear. Well, barring perhaps one another gear upgrade like army gloves or army cape or something like that. And I should have Yeah, protection from infection entirely maxed out. I don't know what that'll mean though. Like, will I actually have just like straight up complete immunity, that would be a bit ridiculous. So I doubt that's the case, but if it... But yeah, but perhaps it'll mean, it'll mean that I... That I... Uh, that I'll be... But it'll, it'll mean that I'll be taking less damage to my immunity when I do get hit, and it might also mean that I need to be at... In fact, I'm fairly certain it means that I need to be at a lower level of immunity to actually get infected. Maybe I'll even need to be at like no immunity at all to get infected with maxed out protection from infection. That's a fun thing to, or, uh, phrase to say, protection from infection. Let's grab the usual crap. Like, also, where the where did they get the fucking army boots? Did they just like buy it off of uh, off of the, the military surplus or whatever, or did they find it on a dead soldier what? or something? Yeah. People are supposed to help each other. That I believe firmly. You may perish yourself, but you should help your fellow being. Extend a hand today to thy neighbor, and he will do the same for you tomorrow. And if he, even if he doesn't, so what? The giver of his own virtues will be consolation all the more. <laughs> well, well, do go on. Your words are music to my ears. <laughs> you, you know, 
Vlad the Younger recently went through a dramatic metamorphosis. His eyes burn bright, his words are brave, his acts so noble. It all paints a, a great picture of him. He used to be a cynical leech, and now he is a hero. So why shouldn't I follow his example? Give away what little I have left. Count me in. That would be redundant in your case. Your, how did you put it? <clears throat> Virtues are already a sight to see, you insufferable flirt, you. <laughs> well, I have, I have procured what Lara asked for. Voila, a small weapon of self-defense. Oh, no need to thank me. I got it practically for free. You know, from the previous owner. But there's more. If you deliver this present to Lara anonymously, I will gladly give away the most valuable thing I own. My panacea. <laughs> and are you really that stupid or is this just you acting? <laughs> Why? Lara needs it for self-defense. She's afraid of the soldiers. You must give it to her in secret. No questions asked. And no names mentioned. When you deliver the pistol to Lara, come back for your reward. I don't mind parting with it anymore. That sounds mighty suspicious. Hey, it's just girls' business, all right. Anyway, I wanted to do a good deed for once. Wash away all my old, uh, wash away my old sins, so to speak. And that's what I get in return. You won't even appreciate my sacrifice. And I promise to give you the panacea, the sample that I got from Vlad the Younger. Fine, right, give me the little thing. I'll deliver it to Lara. Oh, we've counted three separate quests, apparently. <laughs> Right? The word she's promising is too much for such a simple errand. Indeed. Um, ah. Alright. I'm gonna go then. This is a pl uh... This is a plan without a f with neither flaw nor chance of error, I'm sure. So hang on. Got a lot of water, bloody hell. That's the problem with the whole infection spreading so far. You r I rarely even see thirsty fellows walking the streets. Seems like the further I go on in this game, the less opportunities there are for barter. Alas. There are dark rings under your eyes. Take it. It's a double-barreled pocket pistol. If luck is on your side, it may penetrate plywood. Thank you. Here's the thing I wanted to give you since yesterday. The exchange is unequal, but thank you anyway. Perhaps I'll bring it back to you soon. All right, another panacea. Oh crap. I sure hope the panacea is stacked. I'm gonna be getting three of them. I mean, I've got stuff I can drop, but I'd rather not. Obviously. It'd be odd if I'd rather drop it. Maybe if it was revolver ammo, but no. I wonder, I wonder why it's called plywood. Well, probably for the same reason that uh, toilet paper is called like double or whatever, or single ply. I... I wonder, if, I wonder like if that has anything to do with the, me the, the, the like, spray, the like plying someone. Or if, they're diff or if they're completely separate meanings. You know, like plying a woman with alcohol or something. It's so lonely here. I got, I got the jitters. Well, with all this excitement, fortunately everything seems to have worked out just as it was intended to. If for a single minuscule blunder. Like, what? My chest. Hang on. Oh, wait a minute.
Wait, I first gotta talk to the, uh, Bozo, the military commander. Tell him about the old assassination attempt, you know? Kind of a shame the whole the abattoir thing seems to have been a bait and switch. Well, maybe I can re. Uh, yeah. Like, we're all built up to go to the abattoir, and then we just get fucking knocked out and. And, uh, side of it. We fought a just, defensive war, and now they want to turn us into a punitive expedition. Into Corsman. There's going to be an attempt on your life. Have you been told already? I seem to have found myself in the middle of a funny story or someone's idiotic practical joke. I received a letter, clearly penned by a deranged woman. It warns me about some sort of vigilante in a painfully high-strung manner. The vigilante is herself, right? Uh... No. No. The vigilante is a much more significant woman. I fear only one woman in this town, and if she chooses to try for my life, so long me. But I don't think she would use such extravagant means to achieve that end. Her name is Yulia Lyurachev. Uh, she suffers from a neurotic condition. Fine. I'll send Rifleman there immediately. Let her be under house arrest until I have time to make a closer acquaintance. One more thing. The gentler half of the town community is already abuzz with the news. So should any overexcited lady come here, I understand. She'll be treated with utmost respect. I will talk to her and do my best to see her right. But if she turns violent, she will be locked up. Thank you, Commander. Alright. The deed is done. Everyone chooses their own fate or whatever. Without, with hardly any consideration, the commander sent an outfit of his rifleman to Yulia's place. Could it be that she merely wanted arm protection around the clock? If this is the case, I better take the panacea from her. Who knows if her academic fervor will compel her to test the cure on one of the guards. That would be it. Yeah, I guess if she, if she feared for her life for some reason, but knew that she wouldn't be able to convince him to send guards to protect her, then... Uh, then getting put under house arrest would be a decent way, I suppose, of <laughs> getting an armed compliment. Mm. Evening. What? What are you? The fuck? Oh god damn it! I have to write into what he's got. What? Okay. Okay, I have several questions. Let me just put it on. Yeah, what the? Why are they immediately attacking me? What? Oh, I got one of them, just not the one I was aiming at. Hmm. I don't even need to headshot these guys. Well, <laughs> I took a very, very slight dent to my occasion. Ooh, rifle! I'm, I'm honestly surprised they actually allow me to loot these rifles off of them. Ooh. Well, not all of them. Some of them apparently don't have rifles, even though the rifles are right there, but whatever. I... <laughs> there we go. Um... Well, I'm not really certain why they just decided to immediately attack me as soon as I arrived. But hey, at least I now have some bonus rifles. I could probably sell most... Maybe sell two of them and use the second of the backup, just in case. Oh, no, I don't really need the right... Keep it in high double. I could probably just sell all three of them. What? Yeah, what blunder? 
shot, uh, shot were fired. What was it all about? Nothing special. The soldiers outside are an are amiable fellows. They even gave us loot in my honor. My calculations were compromised by a factor I could not anticipate. Apparently, it's best not to involve you in any affairs that have to do with fate and the diversity of its manifestations. Yes, yes, always blaming something. Uh, it's, it's not that, oh, it's all that fate is a load of bullshit. It's just that, oh, something was... Like, I specifically am screwing with things or whatever. Yeah, people will go to weird lengths to justify their belief and stuff like this. I owe you a valuable panacea then, don't I? Indeed. Uh, oh, thank goodness they stack. I'm afraid. Good luck, Yulia. That was... a bit of silliness. The deed is done. Yulia's fatalism was further reinforced. What? It appears that everything she does is part of some intricate plan. Her restless mind is constantly occupied by some furtive activity, invisible but no less dangerous than that. Yeah. I need to bring it up with Anna. After all, her request is suspicious, as is her knowledge of Lara's affair. Something is definitely wrong here. Indeed. What? Alright. Why do, you, why do you look at me with such disapproval? Have I done something wrong? Well knows the kitten whose meat it has eaten. Uh, eaten. What? I've delivered the pistol to Lara. It is done. And here's the reward. See? I'm giving it to you. I part with it as easily as I acquired it. Well, do you admire me? Positively charmed. My hair is disheveled and coming. <laughs> Alrighty then. See, it's done. At least the penalty is in good hands now. I'll find a better use for it. Alright, I've got... Yeah, three penalty. Yeah, four, counting the one I got yesterday. That was a load of silliness, but it was profitable silliness, so... Worth it. What the fuck? Okay. You must have popped into existence. Higher than the ground. I'm just falling. How ridiculous. Oh. Bad grief is sick. Or someone in there is. Hmm. There we go. That's right, that doesn't increase my reputation. Oh well. I'd, get, I'd consider giving them panacea instead, but first of all, I am not certain they actually have any different effect. And secondly, I'd rather save the panacea just in case it does have a better effect in some way for people that I actually care about. Speaking of which, I should probably grab. Uh, I should maybe go grab the other thing of panacea. Wow. A fucking soldier is doing nothing to help his flamethrower guy. What the heck? Ah! Fuck! Asshole! Jesus! No wonder the other guy wasn't helping you. Haven't you ever heard of the concept of friendly fire? Oh. At least you're actually dealing with the fucking... room problem. Really fucking dealing with this. Jesus. Oi, Vlad, my man, my main man. Got a map for me? Happened. <laughs> the price may then change, I take it. Yes, of course. It's become a token gesture at this point, don't you think? The price is barely covering the material costs. Uh, let's see. Hmm, six districts today. Troublesome. Well, at least it isn't uh, spreading. Uh, at least it isn't increasing the speed of the thread as fast as I had feared. 
uh, with only four days left. Yeah. Unlikely to be... Un unlikely to ever have the whole place infected at once. Which is good. Alright, now that we've got that, let's go talk to Victor. And also pick up some stuff and drop some stuff off at, at you know, uh, Eva Young, or, well, at my home, rather. Alright, let's pick up that Pacea, then drop off this. Maybe these rifles, honestly. I can sell them later. Alright, Victor, what new nonsense have you gotten yourself involved in I today? I feel my blood is getting thicker. An omen, is it not? I don't trust omens. Except the number 39. There you are, Bachelor Dankowski. You see, I wanted to avoid all the unnecessary sentimental talk. But it has come to be that the canes are getting ready to sleep. And it will come to be that only Maria will rise from that sleep. If you leave us, we will probably perish. What does that mean? Are you intending to die? We are back at the starting point now. We will, will we deal with the issue of death differently. When the original identity is extinguished and an entirely new one arises in its place, is that death? Is madness not a form of death? Is loss of memory not the true death? Are you about to lose your mind or your memory and letting me know in advance just like that? You're joking, but I am completely serious. What I'm trying to say is precisely what we, that, that we could involuntarily enter a strange state in which we all would, in a manner of speaking, lose ourselves. A slumber from which we will not awaken for a long time. Who would take care of our affairs then? You would entrust them to me? Yes, very much so. Would you be willing to watch over... No. Not over us, but over the garden which we have spent all our lives growing. There are many sharp axes around which, which would hack it away into oblivion. Yes, I would, but only until my business here is finished. Thank you. Now allow me, please, to lay out my first request. You have my attention. I imagine your request has something to do with the tower. Indeed. You see, I'm out of means to influence my son. Now that the, the town is occupied by soldiers, he's going to turn the polyhedron into a fortress under siege, which will infuriate the army. I fear that his ill-advised actions may re result in the tower's destruction. How can it be re prevented? The polyhedron conceals a secret. It is unknown whether it came to be by accident or as part of some ingenious design, but it works. I don't know if it will be revealed to you. I would like you to go inside and convince yourself of the truth of my words. I desire as well, and if you succeed in gaining little Caspar's confidence, I ask you do one last farewell favor to, for our family. Help me make peace with my son. Convince him to listen to me. And what do you want him to do? When the time comes, and it will come in as little as two days now, the children must leave the polyhedron. Otherwise, my daughter Maria could die, and my and jo Georgi's passing would also be in vain. Why would Maria die? Because she will then be forced to become my successor, to take up what I currently guard and thus condemn herself to death, and our family to extinction. Maria will die, and the wondrous spirit whose memory we have so carefully passed on will vanish into nothingness. I don't understand. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Do you believe that it's possible to manipulate reincarnation? No. I don't believe in reincarnation to begin with, frankly. Not only do we believe in it, but we have successfully practiced it for five generations. Don't ask me about the details, that would be too naive and besides the point. I beg I beg of you, convince Caspar to open the polyhedron to us when the time comes. I, I'll try. My long time wish to get inside the polyhedron. I don't know what the fuck any of that means. I'm strong enough to hold her indefinitely. Tell, tell me more about why you need the polyhedron vacated. 
Right now, it's an optics-based fairy uh, fairground attraction, akin to a hot air balloon turned into an intricate playground by foolish children unaware of its true potential. It is time to give the place, give it the place for which it was intended. And that would be. It's a trap, if you will, a re reverberation of mirrors endlessly reflecting the visage of a lost soul, a great soul, Pat a bachelor. A soul able to encompass the entire world. It's the perfect environment to house a spirit which has lost its physical shell, where it can live and create. This lost soul. Are you refer Are you referring to Simon? Right. Hmm. Are you referring create? The difference between the spirit and the mind lies in the fact that the spirit's creativity requires no outside aids. No tools, no signs, no language. It simply exists, and the glory of its existence spreads upon those who would commune with it. Sounds naive to me, but clearly you don't mean- you don't literally mean what you're saying. On the contrary, that is exactly what I mean. Then I'm not in a position to judge how close your theories are to the truth. What I deem to be the truth is what I have been able to consistently observe. Sensible, prudent, uh, for, yeah. that's a sensible and prudent measure, I suppose. And if what I observe is so uncanny that it can be considered a result of a mental or spiritual illness, I turn to others to vindicate me. Also sensible. Qui ignorabit ignorabiture. Uh... Uh, which translates to, who is ignorant of ignorance. Whatever. I didn't mean to offend you with my disbelief. Alrighty then. Okay, so. So yeah, we tried to get into the abattoir. And got knocked the fuck out. Because we just fucking stood there and took it for some reason. Then we got rescued by the uh, the soldiers of the YMCA. <laughs> and then we got embroiled in some ridiculous thing involving a fascination or something crap. But we got some panaceas out of it, so that's nice. And now we're getting involved in the polyhedron and some stuff about reincarnation and crap. I don't really, I don't pretend to understand it, but... Getting into the polyhedron is already something I was keen on. But we shall do that next time. Well, hopefully. We'll get around to doing it. Hopefully it won't be another bait and switch like the abattoir. I wonder if the abattoir is still open. I wonder if I could get into it anyways. Probably not. But until then, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. So long, suckers.